Next on Worcester News tonight, an arrest is made in a deadly hit and run in Milford, killing a young boy. Plus, a parklet popping up in the city today as part of Jane Week. The organizers say there's more of them coming to Worcester. Joining us tonight, I'm Catherine Andrioli. The American Red Cross of Central Massachusetts honoring local heroes tonight. The organization held a reception recognizing members in the community who have exemplified the mission of the Red Cross over the past year. Tonight, a father and son were awarded the Brittany Gangel Humanitarian Award after they pulled a woman from a burning car and saved her life. Mark Surrett and Spencer LaRue say they were at their home in Templeton on January 13th when they saw a car hit a tree across the street and burst into flames. The two ran outside and pulled a 40-year-old woman from the car, which was completely engulfed. Tonight, they were honored along with four other individuals for their heroic actions. He said more than three words, just Spencer, come help me, and within two seconds he was out the door and we were running across the street, and it's not something you, we really thought much about. Uh, fire started to spread and we just had to get her out of the car. We were very humbled and honored to receive the award, and I know I speak for Spencer as well, but uh, somebody like Brittany to do the things that she did at such a very young age, the kind of commitment that she gave to other people, to us are really, truly heroes. And the two say they met the victim of that crash for the first time several weeks ago. She is continuing to recover. Nearly four weeks after a four-year-old boy was killed in a hit and run, officials have now arrested the driver they say killed him. Michael Rosenfeld was at the Milford Police Department and has the story. 54-year-old Melissa Knight in custody. She's accused of crashing into a four-year-old boy in Milford on Easter Sunday and leaving the scene. The child, Jonathan Loja, was killed. His aunt says she's glad someone's been caught. The child's death has shaken up the neighborhood where the crash took place. After it happened, my, my daughter doesn't go outside without, without me. I always with her because we never know what can happen. The investigation took several weeks. Surveillance cameras captured a Chevy Traverse believed to be linked to the accident. And when Knight saw those pictures on television a few days after the crash, investigators say she came into the police department. She provided information to us initially uh, that was inaccurate and the intent was to have us uh, go in an opposite direction from uh, where we should be going. Police say Knight admitted to being on Water Street but that she never hit anyone and that the damage on her car happened from a tree branch during the winter. But detectives kept her on their radar and after executing search warrants, determined she was the driver. We can place that vehicle on that street striking that child uh, and that she's the operator of the vehicle. The evidence shows that. And in other news, the Worcester County District Attorney's Office releases details on the death investigation of former New England Patriot Aaron Hernandez. The report was completed by state police detectives assigned to the DA's office. It confirms the medical examiner's findings showing Aaron Hernandez committed suicide. He was found with wound, a wound in his middle finger, but there were no other sounds of trauma. A toxicology report showed Hernandez did not have drugs inside his system. In a narrow vote, the House of Representatives has passed a bill to repeal and replace President Obama's Affordable Care Act. The bill still needs to go through the Senate, but today's vote has many around Worcester wondering how it will impact them. Olivia Lemon has the story. By a margin of four votes, House Republicans vote to pass a bill to repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare. I, I don't think it's right, personally. I'm concerned that soon maybe everybody will lose health care. Some who live in Worcester say they are concerned the new bill will leave Americans worse off than they already are. It's going to be more difficult for people like us with children who are low income. I think that uh, everyone should have health benefits. In Washington, D.C. Thursday, Congressman Jim McGovern debated on the House floor against the American Health Care Act, saying the Republican bill would take away health care from millions of people. If the American people could sue Congress for malpractice, my Republican friends would be in deep trouble. At a press conference after the House passed the bill, President Donald Trump says his new plan will help bring premiums and deductibles down. This is a real plan. This is a great plan. And we had no support 
from the other party. The bill still has to pass through the Senate, but President Trump says he believes it will pass and be the beginning of a great first year. We are going to have a tremendous four years and maybe even more importantly, we're going to have a tremendous eight years, but we're going to start off with just a great first year. Meanwhile, some Worcester residents are wondering what impact this will have on their health insurance. I don't know. Okay. That's the thing. I just don't know. Olivia Lemon, Worcester News Tonight. Seven years ago, when President Obama signed the health care reform bill into law, Kathleen Sebelius was in charge of implementing the law. She served as President Obama's Health and Human Services Secretary. And during a visit to Worcester Thursday, she expressed, con expressed concern about the bill. I am very worried about the millions of Americans who now feel they have affordable health care and have some sense of financial security who are terrified about what might happen in the future. That really is, is where my worry is. And I'm hoping that uh, as they have an opportunity to talk to their members of the House and the Senate, uh, that this process will be stopped. Mass Development awards nearly half a million dollars to community health centers across the state, including two here in Worcester. The Edward Kennedy Community Health Care Center and Family Health Center of Worcester received nearly $50,000 each through the Community Health Center grant program. The grants will help the centers with projects and purchase new materials such as video conference equipment and medical supplies. Mass Development says these facilities provide critical services for their communities and they're proud, proud to support the center. The NCAA has released the results for its city bidding process, leaving both good and bad news for Worcester. The city's bid was held for hosting a future NCAA basketball tournament, but was selected to host hockey. Worcester will now take part in the 2018 NCAA hockey tournament, with games to be played at the DCU Center. Tourist Bureau Discover Central Massachusetts says criteria of area, ho area hotels is a main reason the city lost its bid for basketball. Online in May this year and again we have another full service hotel that's set to open in March of 2018. So we're getting there but we're really hopeful that continued hotel development will take place in the city of Worcester to help us uh, bring in some, some of these types of events. Worcester last hosted the NCAA hockey tournament in the spring of 2016. The Worcester anti-foreclosure team held a protest outside of a duplex on Orient Street Thursday. One member of WAFT was arrested during the eviction for blocking the entrance. Previous homeowner Marjorie Evans was emotional watching movers take her belongings to a storage facility. The bank has tried to evict Evans from the residence 10 times in the past two years. She says the constable violated the appeals court stay on her property, making the eviction illegal. The housing court is willing to accept Freddie Mac's word and allow them to destroy me and my right now take my house apart on a lie. Foreclosure is like the silent killer of families. It's destroying lives physically, psychologically. We hope to get her back in that house. We hope to help stir the spirit of resistance among the possibly million homeowners in Massachusetts who have illegal mortgages and may face this themselves. And the anti-foreclosure team says the property is currently owned by a federal home loan company called Freddie Mac A. Representative of the company was on scene and did not want to comment. Beautiful spring temperatures today brought many to downtown Worcester, where Action Worcester set up a parklet outside Dead Horse Hill as part of Jane Week. Parklets are urban spaces turned into small parks where people can sit and read or have a picnic outside. The spaces are usually for parking, but Action Worcester says they wanted to bring more people downtown to enjoy the city on foot. Parklets are these little pop-up miniature parks. They're meant to take over spaces that are designed for cars and turn them into spaces that are designed for people to really show the, um, the changing effect that, that that kind of design can have on a single space. The parklet is to reclaim public space and to have uh, more people out and about on the street. That promotes all types of good activities, economic development, public safety, making it safe for people, making, making places where people want to be and spend time. There was even a piano outside today. As you can see, it was a great afternoon in downtown Worcester.
Spring has sprung around central Massachusetts and recent rain has helped growers and tonight we have some expert advice for all your gardeners out there. Roslyn Flaherty has the story. April showers bring May flowers and it's good news for growers like Bemis Farms Nursery and Spencer. They say they have plenty to choose from. Wave petunias, super petunias, million bells, lobelia, dianthus, snapdragons. Co-owner Tina Bemis says those flowers are safe to plant now even if a frost comes, like the one Thursday morning. We had those outside last night in the light frost with no damage on them whatsoever. Bema says the last frost date in central Massachusetts is May 31st. If you plant things like geraniums, tomatoes, and peppers too early, it will set them back. They don't like the cold nights. If you do plant them, she says they need to be covered or taken inside. You want to use some kind of a cloth material. Plastic will conduct the cold right through. So an old bed sheet, a pillowcase is a perfect material to use to cover. Christina Hassett says she's already started her garden and had to take some of the plants inside Wednesday night. I put them out during the day and take them in at night. Bemis says she's looking forward to the rain on Friday and says it won't set back any time planting. The rain that we've had so far has been drizzle and hasn't, hasn't really soaked in or saturated the soil too much. Rosalind Flaherty.